Okay, we'll, we'll start in just a few moments. People are still piling in, uh, which is good. Thanks everyone for joining. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we, we are very fortunate and thankful to have Clive Jordan here with us today, who's going to talk to us about the wonders of BSDD and IDS and, and a few more treats he has in store for us. So, Clive, I think maybe um, when you're comfortable, we can we can just begin. Thanks very much. Sound, that sounds great. That sounds great. Hey, everyone. Yep. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the introduction. We're going to talk about maximizing your efficiency with BSDD and IDS, um, a big focus on open BIM and how to use them in practical sense. So we'll show a couple of examples of creating a, an IDS with BSDD, and uh, we'll show you how simple it can be. The agenda will be just foundations on open BIM, just to level set and something that you can share with others if they're not open to open BIM or if they're not familiar with open BIM already. BSDD, what it is, why it's important and how we can use it. An IDS step-by-step -step guide about how to create and what's included in an IDS. And then an example of those, and hopefully we'll have enough time for some Q&A at the end. So Building Smart is the home of Open BIM. And as a high level introduction, it's about promoting consistent and interoperable data exchange across all of the different parties, the architects, engineers, con contractors, owners. And if we can do that, uh, we really stand a chance to have better communication. And those open standards, they're crucial to ac achieve better collaboration and also future continuity of project data uh, as standards will stay the same, hopefully, so that projects can adopt and use that industry data later on in the, in the future of the project. Lots of different principles when it comes to open BIM, but it's mainly about being open, interoperable, reliable, collaborative, sustainable, and flexible. And if we can do all of these things, we are going to stand a much better stand, uh, much better um, chance to have a successful project as well. If you want to share something with others, uh, there is a link here that we will put into the chat. It gives you some of the critical things that your team members need to know about Open BIM. This is Nicholas. Uh, he shares some really good stories and also some um, videos that are embedded in this post as well. We'll share that. But that's in case you want to get anybody else up to speed with Open BIM. A possible Open BIM workflow that we will cover today is how you use the Building Smart Data Dictionary of all the definitions and terms and all of the important information in the standardized form to create an information delivery specification, so your requirements, and then that will enable you to create some deliverables that can be checked against, and also a way of supporting a reporting and fixing of issues using BCF as well. So lots of different acronyms, lots of different terms here, some of them might not be familiar to you, so we'll cover them in a little bit more detail. But this is the general workflow that we are going to cover today. But why is this important? Why should we even care about this workflow and these acronyms? Well, today, the traditional approach tends to be creating unstructured data, creating spreadsheets, and trying to manage that in a way that Sometimes it's even difficult for humans to read, let alone in a standardized way for, for machines to be able to read as well. So it's great. Excel is a fantastic tool, um, but unfortunately it can be so flexible that the data that's created is error prone and ends up being troublesome for the project rather than being a solution. So the two key components that we're going to introduce today are the BSDD, the Building Smart Data Dictionary, and IDS, the Information Delivery Specification. These are so crucial, and I'll hope, hopefully be able to explain why in the demonstration as well. So first of all, what is BSDD? 
So the stat, the Building Smart Data Dictionary, that's what it stands for. And it's an online service so that everyone can store different properties, terms, and their allowable values, units, and also translation into other languages and the relation between those different terms and classes and properties, et cetera. So it's like a, it's like a dictionary. So if you were to wonder how to spell a word, you would go to a dictionary, you would find out based on a search or based on some kind of um, similar language. It's the same sort of thing. It, it, you, you would be able to go to a search. So just like I search in, in Google, and there is a, let me open this in another browser. So if I was looking for something like a wall, good example, I can pull up in the Building Smart Data Dictionary all of these rich, rich results about the wall. And that can include which classes and also all of the properties that might be associated. So really, really fast to get to some data. Um, that is useful. And if I jump back into our presentation, into our slides, we can see that it's simple to search, but it's also easy for teams that are developing software to hook into, to connect into. So it's not just going to a website to be able to search for something, but it can also be used in the application programming interfaces, the APIs, the connections into other software tools to make your lives easier as an end user. You can also add your own data to it. So if you think about this online repository, this store of really rich and, and powerful sets of classification systems, material lists, properties, etc., it's actually something that you as a team could also supply. So you could provide that data to the world and it is completely free as long as it is provided in an open way. And there are some really great resources on Building Smart website to be able to understand how to do that. Once you have access to that Building Smart Data Dictionary, you can use it to start to build what's called an information delivery specification. And the beauty of an information delivery specification is that what you're creating is both human readable and also machine readable. So if you think about the spreadsheet example, it could be very flexible and trying to ingest the, a spreadsheet of data into a machine, into, a, into a, a piece of software, unless it's formatted exactly how it's expecting it, it's very difficult to make sure that that's going to be passed, it's going to be understood, and um, it's going to be useful. So what the IDS does is it allows us to have a structure, a, a schema of the hierarchy and what's included and what's allowable so that we can define something that both humans and machines can both understand. 